What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily. So the new iPhone 10 with its lack of a home button and all screen design comes with a little bit of a learning curve. There's quite a few new gestures and button combinations that you need to know really in order to get full use out of your device. And in this video, I'm gonna go over pretty much all of those new gestures and button combinations. I went ahead and included timestamps in the video description so you can jump to something specific if you need to. If I forgot something, let me know in the comments below. And also if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask away. But let's go ahead and get into this. So you can of course raise to wake your iPhone 10. that's nothing new, but specific to the iPhone 10, you can now single tap on the screen to wake up the device and view your lock screen. If you've used an Android device, it's something you're probably used to, but this is a first for iPhone. Of course, since there's no physical home button, the way you unlock the device is with Face ID and a swipe up from the bottom. When you look at the iPhone, Face ID should recognize your face, the little lock icon will unlock, and you can swipe into your phone. And swiping up from the bottom is also how you go back home from any app. The home bar is always present towards the bottom of the screen in various shades of black and white, even in landscape and even when watching videos for example. And swiping up from the bottom will always bring you back home from whatever you're doing. To launch multitasking, you also swipe up from the bottom, but the gesture is more of a swipe and flick towards the right, sort of like the shape of a lowercase r or upside down j. That seems to be the motion that works the most consistently. This gesture does take a little bit of practice to get the feel right, and sometimes it helps to do the gesture slowly, but the device will vibrate when multitasking is launched to give you a sense of whether or not you did it correctly. To force close any application in multitasking, you first need to tap and hold on an application, and then you can either swipe it away like any other iOS device, or you can press the little red minus button up at the top left corner of any of the apps. You need to make sure you tap and hold first though before swiping an app away, since only swiping will just dismiss multitasking. There's also another way you can switch between applications, to do this, you swipe left and right along the bottom of the home screen by the home bar, and you're able to flip between all the applications you currently have running. Personally, I've found this method of app switching to be a lot easier and more convenient. Since swiping up from the bottom of the screen always functions as your home button, when you rearrange your home screen applications, you also swipe up from the bottom to set them in place and get out of the editor mode. And because of the new home gesture at the bottom, Control Center has been moved to the top right corner of the screen. To access Control Center, just swipe down from the top right with a back battery and network indicators are, and this is probably the gesture I personally have the hardest time reaching just given how tall the screen is. Swiping anywhere else from the top of the screen, whether it be from the middle by the notch or the top left corner, will bring down Notification Center. When the iPhone X was first announced, a lot of people said that swiping down from the top left was how Notification Center would launch, but swiping down from the center of the screen like any other iPhone works perfectly fine. Along with all the new on-screen gestures, there's also some tricky button combinations that are needed to do certain things on the device. Different combinations of the power button on the right and volume up and down buttons on the left are used for certain tasks. For example, pressing and holding just the side button by itself for a few seconds will launch Siri. You can always launch Siri by saying, hey Siri, if you have that set up, but the side button does primarily function as the Siri button when you long press. If you have Apple Pay set up, you can launch it and pay for goods by double pressing the side button and looking at your device to enable Face ID. You have to make sure you're looking at your device with Face ID recognizing you in order to complete any purchase with Apple Pay. Taking a screenshot is a two button combination. You have to press the side button and the volume up button, and you can either do that at the same time if you time it right, or by pressing and holding the side button and then quickly pressing the volume up button before letting everything go. Powering off the device is also a two button combination. Pressing the side button and volume down will bring up a screen that lets you slide to power off and also put your device in SOS mode to contact emergency services. You can also accomplish this from the lock screen, but keep in mind that if you press and hold this button combination for too long, SOS mode will automatically initiate and emergency services will be contacted. This button combination also disables Face ID on the lock screen and will prompt you for the passcode in order to unlock the phone. One of the most tricky gestures to get a hang of is reachability, which is a feature from the larger 5.5 inch plus model iPhones. You need to first enable reachability in the accessibility options and settings, and then you can initiate reachability on the home screen or within any app by swiping down on the screen at the very bottom. It took me a little bit to find the right area but it's basically right over the home bar and as close to the bottom of the screen as you can get. It's particularly tricky in apps that you can scroll down in, but after playing around with it for a while, it ended up being not too bad. And finally, probably the most inconvenient combination of buttons on the iPhone X is how you force restart the device. You have to quickly press the volume up button, then the volume down button, then press and hold the side button for about 10 seconds or longer. Your phone will then shut down and restart. It seems like Apple made this unnecessarily 
difficult, but from time to time, it does come in handy. So there you go. Those are all the new gestures and button combinations you need to know to get the most out of your new iPhone 10. If I happen to miss anything, or if you guys have any questions, definitely let me know in the comments below. Also, be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later.